Hello, welcome to Michelle Sews again. I'm Michelle. Style Arc is having a sale. They are 30% off site-wide on their website and 20% off all their patterns on Amazon. And I'll explain the difference between the two. Um, but I wanna share with you some of my favorite Style Arc patterns in case you might be interested. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please stay tuned. <music> Okay, so if you've been following me a while, then you know that I have a love of Style Arc patterns. I love their aesthetic, it's very me. I love their size range, it's super inclusive. Um, their instructions historically have not been all that fabulous. They are getting better, um, but quite honestly, I've been able to make everything that I have tried to make from them, even when I was a beginner. So you might have to muddle through or maybe find a sew along, but if you like their aesthetic and you like their style, then this sale could be very good for you. So as I mentioned, they are 30% off site-wide on their website and their website, you can um, they give you multiple options. So you can buy just the PDF, you can buy the PDF plus a print version. However, they are based in Australia. So if you buy the PDF in the print version, I'm not sure how that works. I've never done that before because I, I assumed shipping from Australia might be a little prohibitive. I could be wrong. Um, so I can't speak to that. However, Amazon, also carry style arc patterns. I don't believe they carry the full range, but it is a very extensive range and it is 20% off at checkout. You won't see it in your cart. I speak from experience. You will see it once you go to the checkout though. So um, what's good there is that you will get a printed version. So while you're not saving the 30% off, you then, if you're a PDF person like me, I usually buy their PDFs and then send them to be PDF plotting. So then I have to pay the extra. So I believe that with 30% off plus sending it to PDF, I'm spending more than getting the 20% off of a printed pattern on Amazon. I haven't done the math, but regardless, it's a lot easier. So I have made some purchases from Amazon, but what I want to tell you is that I have right now 42 of their patterns. I went through my list today. I have everything that I own on my Trello account. If you're interested in looking at everything that I own from Style Arc, I keep my Trello account link in the description box of all my videos. So if you're ever interested in taking a peek of what I have, feel free to go and look. Um, I have not made all 42, but I have made 16 out of the 42, which is about, which is 38% of the selection and several of them I have made more than one time. So what I want to do is go through everything that I, I'm not going to go through everything that I own because that would take us a long time. I am going to mention the ones that I've made and then I'm going to tell you out of those that I've made, which ones are my favorites. Um, and then I'm going to share with you the ones that I just bought this morning. <laughs> All right, so let's just get jump into it. All right, so the first one that I'm gonna share with you is the Betty Woven Tunic. I've mentioned this several times recently. It was in my hashtag five essential handmaids video that I made recently that was started by Sarah from Naughty Gnome. And I love that it's a woven kind of t-shirt tunic pattern. And it's just super simple. It lets you showcase fabric, which is my my favorite part of uh, a make is the fabric. Obviously, you can see I'm into color and prints. And so I just love that. Plus, it's super easy to wear. It goes great with leggings, which is my day-to-day -day uniform. So I've made two of those so far, and I'll I'll post pictures in here along the way as, as we go. The second top that I've made is the Blair. This top can be either a top or a dress. And I've had this pattern for quite some time. I bought it when I first started sewing before I knew how to read sizes and I went with my ready to wear size, which was a mistake. <laughs> so the first one that I made didn't fit me. Um, I've actually made this three times now that I think about it because I made it when I first started sewing. The instructions were kind of rough, but I was able to muddle through it. And then I've made two since then. One of them was a fail just because I iced dyed the fabric and it kind of frayed and fell apart. So that one just got completely thrown away. And then I made this one that I've made recently 
for the Color Me Cave uh, Challenge by Free Spirit Fabrics. And I used um, this, all of these are cave facet fabrics. This is my main one, obviously. And then I used the same fabric for the button placket, the collar, and the sleeve cuffs. And then I used a jelly roll to piece together the overlay. And you can see there's an overlay and the underlay I just did, this is a separate piece. So you're sewing the underlay to the up overlay or to the top piece. And then you sew the um, overlay, which has a, a scooped side so that you can see the underlay. And then the top is just pieced together. And I just love the way that this came out. It's one of my favorite tops. I wear it quite often. So that is my Blair. Um, I've also made the Courtney. Uh, well, it's a woven top. It's kind of like a t-shirt. It's got a, um, it's got some interest to it. It has um, two side panels going down. I've made this twice. Um, I haven't shown you my recent one. Um, I'll show that to you soon. Um, it's a nice basic top. I'll be honest, it's not my favorite. Um, I have, it, it comes with a pattern piece to make a uh, bias tape for the neckline and I've followed the instructions and I, I just can't get it to fit tight. I think I just need to make the pattern piece shorter so that it doesn't lift out. Um, but it's a nice basic top that allows you to do some color blocking, which you guys know I love. So that one is a, it's an okay one. Um, I've made the Dahlia tunic. This is another one that I made when I first started sewing. I've only made it once. Um, again, I had the wrong size. The undershirt was way too small. I couldn't wear it. The overshirt is just so boxy and oversized that I've been able to wear that with other tank tops underneath. And it was, it's one of my favorite shirts. I wear it quite often. Um, I would love to make that one in the right size. I would probably make the same size of the overshirt that I made the first time because it's the perfect size. It's not too oversized. I feel like if I made the right size of the undershirt and made the same the coordinating size of the overshirt that that would be way too big. So what I'd like to do is make the right size of the undershirt and have that be like pattern mashing, um, print mashing. And I think that would be a super cute top, but I really enjoy that top. Um, the Joan woven tunic is a v-neck. It's got a seam down the front. Again, um, opportunity for color blocking or print mashing or whatever, um, or just make it all in one. And it's a great basic v-neck woven top. The Kent woven tunic, I've made this once. The size that I made, according to my measurements, came out way too big, but it's really cute. I love the fact that, um, these, I love the way that the sleeves are constructed. It's a puff sleeve, it's a three quarter sleeve and it's a puff sleeve, but the way that you construct it is there's an inner sleeve and an outer sleeve and the inner sleeve is shorter than the outer sleeve piece. So it forces that puff right at the end. It's really kind of cool. Um, but that one is a really pretty top. The Reese Knit Tunic is one of my favorite makes that I've made. Um, I've only made it once and I made it in this lime green and turquoise blue stripe knit. And I just love the way the stripes play against each other. Um, unfortunately, I made it from fabric from Fabric Mart, which I know a lot of people love fabric, fabric Mart fabrics. I've not had great success with the quality. I've had some, not great. This is one of the ones that wasn't great quality, so it's kind of started fraying at the pockets. Um, so I haven't been able to wear it anymore, but I loved that top. I wore it a lot. So I would like to make that one again. Um, the Rhea knit top, I made that one. It's just kind of an oversized dolman sleeve top, and it's fine. I think my problem with that one was the fabric that I used wasn't great quality, so I ended up decluttering that top. So I, I never even wore it. Like I tried it on after I made it, I didn't really feel like there was a way for me to save it. I don't even think I've ever talked about it on my channel, to be honest. I, I think the pattern has potential, so I will make it again. I just didn't have success the first time. But yeah, a cute top. The Scarlet Top is another one that I made when I first started sewing. And I love the fact that it's got the, um, the split kind of curved hem and it's 
uh, made for color blocking. So the, bo the bottom piece you can make separate from the top. It's all sewn together, it's not layered. Um, but yeah, it's a great opportunity for color blocking. And I made that shirt and I did recently declutter it because I wasn't really wearing it. Um, but I think it was more to do with the prints than the style of the shirt because I did wear it quite a bit when I first made it. I just kind of lost my love for it. But um, it was more about the fabric than it was the pattern. So I can see myself making that one again. The Anderson knit dress I have made twice. I love that. It's a sweatshirt sweater, a sweatshirt dress. It's got panels down the side and the pockets are within where the panel meets the middle. And I love that top. Uh, so I love that dress. Um, I know I don't have a lot of opportunity to wear it here in South Florida, but in the winter, it's a great only layer piece for when it's chilly but not cold. And my first one I made, um, I ice dyed and um, I cut all the pattern pieces out of my white sweatshirt fabric and then I dyed them all with the same dye combinations but I folded them all different. So they had different tie-dye patterns on them even though they were all out of the same color. And I have gotten a lot of wear out of that and I still wear it, I love it. Um, the next dress that I made is the Emmy dress and I think that one has a lot of potential. Again, I made the size according to my measurements. It's really too big. I am going to, that one is in a pile of clothes that I have to either resize or refashion or something. I love the way the pattern, the fabrics that I used on that. One is like a floral, um, it's more of a home deck fabric, but it's not super thick or stiff. It feels like a, an apparel fabric, so I went ahead and used it. And then I also used a baby cord. Uh, corduroy with it. And I love that combination. I think that they look really great together. It's just the dress is too big. So I think I'm going to resize that one because I think the style is actually very suited to my style. The next one that I made is the Hope dress, which is iconic for Style Arc. So many people love the Hope dress. I've made, let's see, at least one of the dresses and I made it twice in a top. I've recently decluttered both of my tops because I wasn't wearing them. They were just a little much for me and my lifestyle. Um, my dress, I absolutely love. It's one of the things that I've made that I get more compliments on than anything else. I mixed three colorways of one print and I just love it. My problem is that the last time I wore it was to work in Akron and, um, the fabric split on one of the tiers. I think I can fix it, so I haven't gotten rid of it, um, but I just haven't fixed it yet. But I love that dress so much, and um, I'll ex I'll tell you what I got in the next section. The next dress that I made was the Emerson dress, and this is a button-up dress. It's a drop waist. It's got a tiered skirt, I think a mandarin collar, um, and it's got a longer sleeve, but I just made a short sleeve version. I made this one in the size of, according to my measurements, and this one came out too small. That is very rare. It's happened twice for me from Style Arc, but this was one. Luckily, just based on the style, I can wear it with the buttons open as kind of a duster, and I think it looks really cute. I made that one in collaboration with Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room, where we both did our take on a print mix tiered dress. And I do love the dress. And hopefully as I continue to lose weight, I'll be able to wear it as a dress. But for the time being, I wear it as a duster. And um, I used three colorways of a print, of the same print, all in animal prints. But obviously, because it's me, they're all very colorful <laughs> animal prints and not neutrals. And I like that dress. Then the next dress that I've made is the Nova Midi, and that is one of my tried and true dress patterns. It is a tank style um, dress pattern with tiers, and you can make it either with a single tier, two tiers, three tiers, whatever you want. I did drop the waistline because it is designed to be right under the bust, so it's kind of an on pier waist. I don't like that look on me. I don't find it to be flattering. So I dropped the waistline to my natural waist and then I put two tiers on it. But um, I love the tank style. It's not um, 
it's not uh, too skinny. Like it's it's more of a, a sleeveless bodice than it is even a tank because the straps are just, they go all the way to the shoulder. So um, I love that. It makes it easy to wear a regular bra. And I like to wear sleeves to cover up my arms, but that is an instance where I will wear the sleeveless and I love it. And I have made four of those and I love all of them. So that one is definitely a go-to for me. From a, uh, for bottoms, I have made the Laura leggings and I made this last fall or winter. Um, I made them in this really fun um, rib knit, kind of almost a velour, not really velour, but kind of like a velour texture animal print. And it is in the neutrals. It's the like cocoa or khaki or beige with the black animal print. Um, and I wore it with um, an oversized cowl neck uh, tunic and the outfit looked super cute. Um, I haven't worn those a lot, but they fit me perfectly and I can see me making more fun leggings. Um, leggings is one thing that I haven't really been eager to make because I wear black or gray leggings pretty much every day with my me made tops. Um, but I, I can see me making some more fun print leggings. I'm never going to make the basics because I can buy them so cheap at Old Navy when they're on sale. They're like, I can get them for less than 10 bucks and they fit me and they last forever. So that's just not something I would enjoy making. So why bother? But some fun print leggings, I can see me enjoying that um, and having some fun with that. So I, I think I would make more of those and they were super easy to make. It's pretty, I, if I recall, it's only one pattern piece. It's one leg that wraps around. There's no side seams. There's no waistband because you just sew the elastic onto the edge and fold it under. They're so easy. Um, I have made the Basharl jacket that was in collaboration with Megan G from Megan G Makes. Um, and we did that for the Sew Purple to End ALZ challenge last year. Um, I ended up decluttering that and giving it to my sister just because really more than anything because I don't have a need for it here in South Florida and I think she'd get more use out of it. I do think it's cute. Um, it's not something I would be super excited to make again, but I'm happy that I made it. It wasn't difficult. Um, the pockets do kind of go back a little bit far in my opinion. I think Megan said the same thing. Um, so, I mean, it's a nice jacket. This, if the style is you, then go for it. Um, but it's not something that I would make again. And then the final thing that I have made from my list of patterns that I own from Style Arc is the Logan jacket. I loved making this jacket. I don't wear it all that often. I made it out of a wide whale corduroy and I did it in a couple of different colors. So I color blocked it and I think it came out so good. And I did all the top stitching. You don't have, the top stitching is optional. And I did it and I didn't even mind that I was switching out from a single needle to a double needle between all these stages because I didn't save the top stitching till the end. Um, because you have to top stitch a lot of different places. And I didn't even mind. I really had a good time sewing it. I think it came out super cute. And um, if I had a need for more shackets, I would probably make more of them. Um, I don't really have a need for them. I, can, I might make it again if I need a different color. I did it in, I think, orange and red. But um, yeah, that one was super fun. Shackets are still a thing. They're still in style. So if you haven't already made your own shirt jacket, um, <laughs> I say that because if you watch Sarah from Naughty Gnome, she hates the word shacket. <laughs> it cracks me up. So she always purposely calls it shirt jacket. Um, but yeah, so uh, that one is a great pattern. So those are the ones that I have made out of my list of ones that I own. Um, and then I ended up buying six more and I bought them on Amazon so that I can get the printed version and don't have to send them off to PDF plotting. So these are the six that I bought. I bought the Ethel top, which is a cute, it's kind of a crop top with these angled, um, pieces coming down the side. I will definitely lengthen it. I'm not going to wear it that short, but I really love that angled inset on either side um, to do some uh, color blocking with. The Como Knit Pant 
kind of surprised me that I was interested in that. It is a wider, wider leg knit pant. I think the reason I haven't really loved wide leg pants, especially wovens, is because they're not, if it's not flowy, then I just feel like it adds weight to me. It adds width, which I don't need to add width. I've got plenty of my own. So um, I haven't really been in the wide pant camp these are made out of knit so i feel like they'd be super comfy and i could make them out of a fun knit print and as long as they're flowy then i think that they would be just a cute lounge around the house kind of a pant i don't know that i would wear them out and about in public um maybe we'll see how cute they come out but yeah i did buy the como knit pant i bought the pixie woven dress I've seen this one and I really have hesitated, but then I saw Stephanie from Stephanie Farrell Focus made it and she loves it and it looks adorable on her. So I went ahead and picked it up. The Bonita top is a wrap style top with a little bit of a peplum. I'm not huge into wraps, like wrap top dresses or shirts, but this one looked cute and I thought I would give it a try. Um, so I went ahead and picked that one up. And then I picked up the Yvette dress, which is, um, it's a woven pattern, but it's got like geometric shaped insets kind of all over it. It's almost kind of Marcy Tilton like, which um, is not generally my vibe, but this one kind of looks like that, but kind of calmed down a little bit. <laughs> Um, and I just think it's a great opportunity to do some really fun pattern mixing. Um, and it's fit, it's kind of fitted, which is also not my norm, but I thought that that would be flattering if I can get the fit right. So I'm giving that one a try. And then the last thing that I bought, they don't have the Hope Extension Pack on Amazon, but they do have the bundle with the Hope Dress and the Hope Extension Pack. I've gone down 40 pounds since I bought the Hope pattern the first time, so I kind of needed a new one anyway, and I want the extension pack. I saw Sarah made um, the wrap version of the extension pack. It looked adorable on her, um, and they have a couple of different versions there, and I already love a raglan sleeve top, so I am excited to try some of the extension pack options. So... I would love to hear from you. Do you like Style Arc? I know a lot of people don't like them because of their instructions. A lot of people are, you know, prefer Big Four over Indie, so they're probably not gonna buy anything. But if you are interested, if you've had a pattern that you've seen people make and it's from Style Arc and you've been on the fence, now would be the time to try it because if you like to put together PDFs, you can get 30% off on their website. If you'd rather print it, then it's 30% off if the shipping isn't too prohibitive for you or 20% off from Amazon. So I'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Have you made any of the ones that I mentioned? Um, it, do you have a favorite style arc pattern? If so, let me know what it is. I'd love to hear. That's it for me today. Wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Thank you.